One of my goals for the next quarter is to systematize my agency. I'm gonna see what I'm gonna copy out from it. In general, systematization, some people say systematization. Um, systemization is the real word. It's basically the reduction of a system, reduction of the complexity of a system. And in my case, this means this is that I need to reduce the complexity of my agency. Basically, my agency started in 2021, so that's now roughly three years ago. And if you want to have a look at it, this is pairing. This is our current website. And so one of the ideas we have is take this website here and we move it into a wiki format where all the processes are documented. Because the reason is that recently certain leads come, came in and I need to have a better way to service these leads because right now I've been mostly doing the whole process myself. And now it's about more about delegating and making sure that everything gets serviced in the same way with consistent quality. And the basic idea here is that everything that we do twice gets documented so that process kind of gets evened out over time and a process that we only run once, we don't need to document it right now. The main things I think we should tackle in my company are these five points, just because I know by heart that these things we're always doing over and over again. So HR processes, project management and development, those are things we're always doing over and over again. And then the points culture and customer success, that's something that's a bit new to us, which we need to define um, with a bit more thinking upfront. But I wanted to include them here because they're also the easiest to make. Let's quickly talk about how to make a playbook. So I was looking into Google search, how to make a playbook. A playbook is basically an SOP, a standard operating procedure. It's just a fancy word of a playbook is something that people can use and copy and use right away. When you look for a Google search, let's, look, let's do this real quick. So if you look for agency playbook, you basically have consultants who are selling people how to systematize their agency, a books, and then mostly sales pages from companies who just want to teach young people to build their next agency. And that's not what we want. We, are, we will actually want to have real examples because I want to focus on things that have, been, that have been proven to be right and not something that we should do or any kind of sales page. I don't want to buy a program and then follow that because we are already running our agency. I'm not setting something up from, from zero. I want to take my agency and make it better. So that's what we want to focus on. And basically we want to copy what works. So one of the things I wanted to touch base on is while doing a lot of research on this topic, for me, it was very difficult to find good stuff because most of these playbooks are actually hidden. This comes from the fact that companies document this internally and it's not necessarily beneficial for them to do this in the open. A couple of companies are doing that though. And those are the ones we found and we're putting them here in this, in this YouTube video. And another thing I noticed by talking to a lot of friends is that a lot of playbooks are never getting written because a lot of companies don't have standard operating procedures. And that's basically what happens in my company right now. And this is also why I'm making this video to hold myself accountable in the future to look back and see that this actually has been done. Okay, so what we wanna do, we wanna find open source playbooks. I guess if you're a bit familiar with open source software, you probably have seen GitLab. So that's one of the things we're gonna start with, but something like that would be great to find across all areas. So let's have a look. Um, I researched a couple, which I'm gonna show here in this video. And yeah, so we put this whole thing on Till Carlos dot com slash company playbook if you want to download the resources you can go there and get them let's talk first about the hr processes so what we want to do basically is employee onboarding happens always multiple times per per quarter per month so that's something we want to we want to build a system around and then something like contract signing which also is is part of the onboarding or happens before it's also very important to get this uh, into a system and then recruitment it is something that we have been polishing over and over again and making it better every year that's something we need a process for so i looked around and the best resource i found was oyster hr and they actually put everything into a notion site let's have a look at it yeah you copy can, you can copy this url from here um uh, or go to tilcarlos.com company playbook what i like about them is that they really do all these things here let's have a look at the hr thing okay so as a part of the onboarding procedure they really have some good content here and they put it all into a notion site it's written beautifully so we're certainly gonna copy something from here how we socialize is also something that's quite important they have something where they connect people uh, in a remote setting which is quite nice and yeah they document how they use slack so i think this is a valuable resource here um, and they also have country-based region-based slack channel that's pretty cool loom pals i haven't seen that yet 
Let's look at what Loom Pals is. Okay, so Loom Pals basically an, an asynchronous version of a coffee meeting remotely. I like this idea. I would like to copy this as well. So that's definitely something I'm gonna bookmark for later. The next thing I wanna talk about is culture. That's something which I think naturally is a bit hard to define because culture is written by the team and it's not written by the CEO. Yes, the CEO influences quite a bit, but in the end, it's the team that actually brings it to life in, in everyday actions. Someone said, culture eats strategy for breakfast and I would totally agree on this. So, but still, I, I do believe that I can write how my workflows are and what I believe in, in some site and some page on our internal wiki. And then we, I can ask the team to write it for them. And then I'll see what comes out of it. Some things that I think we can, we can start with are these parts here. And of course, this is, this is interesting because I really don't want to give people something that, that comes from the top of my head and, 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 and be just assuming that they should adopt that. But it would be interesting to see how my team is thinking about critical thinking here, especially as a couple of people are in Asian countries where this topic is approached in a bit uh, of a different way. But that's for another video, so subscribe to my channel if you wanna hear about these things. I'm gonna make a video about culture at one point, um, go a bit deeper into that. So for now, I wanna put these ideas in here and there is actually a really good podcast about this, which is from Noah Kagan, who just built his company to 80 million in yearly revenue. And he has a couple of things. Let's, um, this is the link here. The 80 million teammate playbook. Uh, you, can, you can listen to it yourself, it's 30 minutes. Basically what, what he talks about is some kind of culture club. So where he puts all the culture things into that and how, how they le learn from failures and transparency and everything. Then they have a so-called smooth operator, a teammate handbook where they document the processes. And then they also have some encouragement to, for people to be their own boss, leading by example and so on. So this is a definitely a good resource. I can recommend you checking that out. Okay, up to the next. The next one is project management. And that's something where I really need to learn from the best because project management is something that we've been doing naturally. And recently we have been getting better at that. We don't have it systematized yet or systemized yet, just because there are processes that happen over and over again but they're not necessarily always the same. So this is gonna be a challenge. What I want to do though is this planning process at expectation setting, and then also something where we call status updates for the clients. That is something that definitely is always the same. So what I like about this here, um, the best resource I found is a paper book written by Basecamp. Definitely something where anyone who reads this, every time I send this book to someone, they learn something new. And you can read it online, you can download a PDF or even buy it printed. Um, things like, going from rough requirements to like a sharp map of things to do. It's just amazing. So I can really, I can really encourage you to read this. They're just nuggets in here all the time. Yeah. And it's for example, the, the, how they approach backlogs and then how they, how they make the small features and all so on. This is really good. Okay. The next thing is development. And that's something where I have seen clients of mine not fail, but not being system systematic enough where they would just write checklists and then at one point nobody respects those checklists. For me, I think the most important thing is setting a good standard for code reviews and then setting a good standard for DevOps and also security. So security is maybe part of the onboarding process, but also part of the actual development, the actual shipment of a, of a project. So those things we can document and we should document. And the best thing I hear I found is from GitLab. So GitLab is a thing I mentioned earlier. GitLab has documented everything and this is this is insane. If you look at that, GitLab just put everything into something called, um, I think it's Hugo. They use Hugo in order to make this website. And you can go into this, you can edit this page even somewhere. I mean, you cannot really publish it, but you can edit it for yourself. Here, view page source. They really put everything in it. And it's amazing because all the employees are doing this. So two weeks ago, this person here, this employee, just updated something on the page. What I really like about this, that they have a constant process of the whole team improving their sites. So that's something which I think we every, any company can learn from that. The question is, do you actually want to put this online and be so explicit about it and have everybody read what you're doing, including um, where people work and who are, who's working at the company and everything else? I leave this to you, but I think the idea in general is really good. And the last thing we have is customer success. That's something which I have been doing myself and I have to admit, I need to get better at that. 
And in order to get better, one of the things is that I'm going to document these processes. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I need to delegate this more other in order for us to scale with our incoming leads. So I need to document what I did and then delegate that. And these are things like onboarding clients, how we communicate. And also what I noticed, something like uh, an escalation management playbook, as I would call it, something where the clients also know how they can del how, how they can escalate if, if a problem appears. The best thing I found here, there are actually a couple of blog posts about it, I guess, very SEO worthy. So customer success playbook, it's probably something people people really Google for. Um, yeah, and they have here best practices and so on. And I also like this one from Hiver. This is the one which I, which I mentioned earlier, so probably something I'm gonna copy from here. And yeah, this is a good outline here what should be included in the customer success playbook. This is a good template for us to use right away. So right now I'm talking with a mentor who probably helps us copy or get inspired by his company, his agency playbook and help us develop our own. So that's something that's not, not set in stone yet. And that's something where I hope that person says, yes, we're still working on that. If they, if they say yes, then I think we have a good start. This is the path now. So we are documenting this now on a, on a wiki page. We might even publish that online. And in the next videos, we're gonna do yeah something where we're gonna do, dive a bit more deep into a couple of these things. For example, the HR, I wanna tackle that first. And then also the service delivery, product management. Um, those things I would also document just because our clients should know about them. And then we have administrative frameworks, which we probably need to keep hidden, um, at least not put on a website and also financial management and biz dev. So those things we're gonna do at one point, partly internally, partly online for you to see. And um, yeah, in general, we are on our mission to build 20 independent software teams at my company pairing.dev. So subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see how this is going and what kind of things we learn along the way. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon.